Adrian Diego, and you are tuned in to Breaking Down the Breakdown. For today's episode, we have the wonderful, the amazing Connie Russell sharing her stories and experiences with anxiety. Alright, hey guys. So today is a little different, and uh, I know the quality is like, oh look, there she is. Um, <laughs> The quality's not gonna be as good. Actually, I think it is kind of good, but I'm finally having people join me as a guest. So, for today's guest, we have a really good friend of mine named Connie, and she's brave enough to actually share her story. So let's welcome her. Let's wait. Da, 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 da. What up, G? Hi, baby. Hello. How are you? Oh, you know, hanging in there. You know how it is. <laughs> I do. <laughs> mm, how's work? Did you work today? Yeah, it was good. Um, pretty stressful, but I managed. Got it done. Amazing. Sometimes it's better when you're busy. That's true. Gets yeah. you a little distracted from things, right? Mm-hmm. My goodness. Thank you for joining me. Of course. Yeah, so, I'm happy to see your face. I know, me too. It's been too long. We've been trying to set things up and it's just kind of like, it never works out. Yeah, well, you know, times are tough right now. Yeah, my mm-hmm. goodness. But anyway, let's get right down through the nitty gritty. First of all, everybody, this is Connie. Connie, this is everybody. Say hi. Look at that pretty hi. face. Hi, everybody. Hello. Okay, so I actually asked her to join me because I know, well, there's a lot of people that really want to share their stories, and I figured, you know, why not start with Cons? Because Cons over here has helped me through the roughest, darkest patch I've had ever since this whole thing happened to me. And, you know, it's it's just been great to have her around. And I was like, you know what? She is such a great energy, a positive energy at that. But at the same time, you would have never known with the amount of stuff that she exudes, the amount of great stuff she exudes, that she's actually going through some stuff as well. So, you know, that to me, it really just showed how strong she was. And I was like, you know what? I got to have her on this. So, you know what, Connie? <laughs> why don't you tell everybody about yourself? Who are you? <laughs> well, thank you, first of all, for that amazing introduction. It's so <laughs> flattering. Um, I, yeah, just I think first off, I'd like to speak on that note and say you know absolutely anxiety manifests in different ways and the way that somebody would perceive i think from the outside that somebody's going through something is a lot different than what's going on internally so specifically for me people when i've come out to them about what i've been going through they've said things like Oh no, what? You're you're always so strong. You're always happy. You're always confident. Right. You're always doing your own thing. But inside it's a very different story. So um yeah, I've definitely had experiences where I've been having conversations with people and like everything's blacking out around them. I feel my oh body my starts goodness. shaking. And uh, I would come back to them afterwards and be like, no, oh, I'm sorry. Like I was just going through a little bit, whatever. And they're like, what are you talking about? So <laughs> Holy crap. You yeah, know that. yeah. They had no idea. So yeah, definitely. It, it's a different scenario for everybody. You oh never know what somebody's going through. Yeah. Cause like, and you know, like, and, and so I guess the very first thing I want to ask is when did you first, I guess you would say break, right? Like, when did you realize? Like, when was the first time that you were like, okay, something is up? Yeah. um, Well, that's a hard question, actually, because I've been dealing with anxiety for a very long time. Mm -hmm. Um, I think the first time I remember having a panic attack was when I was 11. And Holy crap. Yeah, yeah. And I didn't know what was happening. I just fell to the ground, and I was kind of, immobilized so I wasn't able to move I didn't really have any thoughts going on I think my whole body just shut down like it was like a a total like flip of a switch like my body turned off and um, since then it's kind of changed and grown with me and different situations that I've been through so um, 
the, the symptoms of my anxiety have changed a lot. And I guess I'll talk about like most recently, right. um, I, the, went to the hospital just before quarantine actually after having a panic attack for about 24 hours and what yeah yeah 24 hours yeah yeah i had a, a a difficult situation happen to me and i don't really like conflict so let's just i'll sum it up to that like there, right. was, there was a conflict and that really triggered me and so i was shaking I didn't feel like I was in my own body. It kind of felt like I was dizzy and disoriented. I was right. unable to like keep myself calm. I was inconsolable. So yeah, it was it was a scary experience. Like I wasn't sure when it was going to stop and when I was going to like come back down because right. as you know, like it comes in waves and. I'm like, okay, it'll get better, it'll get better. And I was just staying right up here for oh, hours. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, yeah. So, so when, when you went to um, seek medical help, I mean, like, what did they tell you? Like, what what were the things that they kind of ran, you, that ran down through you? Yeah, well, it was a difficult experience, to say the least. Like, I, I felt like there was only one way or one formula of how they thought about how to treat it. Okay. So like I was put in a room that was like, looked like a prison cell, like right. there was scratches on the wall and like things carved into the walls and like oh immediately I was like back up to like, right. Like, well, I thought I was in danger. Like I just didn't, right. my, I didn't feel comfortable there. Um, the doctors talked to me very matter of factly. Um, and, you know, they were just trying to go through the list of, how, like, how bad I was. And as you know, like, with anxiety, it's not something really, you can't get a blood test or they can't no. do a scan. They don't really know what's going on. So um, that was a difficult situation. And by the end of it, they could tell that I was so worked up because I just kept shaking. Like, I, right. I couldn't stop shaking. So they brought a nurse in. And she handed, she put her hand out with a pill in it. And I was like, what is that? <laughs> like, mm. Oh, like, what, what is that? So it was Ativan, oh, uh, as I found out. And she was like, okay, well, you can't drive for like 24 hours. It affects everybody differently. And I had work the next day. So I was like, you know what? Not an option for me. They were like flabbergasted. They're like, what do you mean you're not going to take it? Like, you're freaking out. Like, what do you want from us? I'm like, yeah. I don't know. I just want options. So they ended up prescribing me Advan, like a one-time prescription of like oh. 10 or 15 pills. Um, and I didn't take them. Right. Yeah. I mean... It's, you know, if I were in your shoes, right? Like, I would be scared to take anything if I had work the next day, right? Yeah, yeah. I was I was unsure of how it would affect me, mm -hmm. as well as, like, I was already up here. Right. And I know that with my anxiety at the worst of times, like, I could, like, eat something that I've eaten a million times before and think that I'm having an allergic reaction. It's like when you're oh, that crap. okay at yeah. like such a heightened state of anxiety and obsessiveness, like you can kind of work mm. yourself up into everything. So right. yeah, I, I decided against that. And then thankfully, I mean, I don't want to say thankfully, but I really needed a break. So when quarantine hit, um, it actually turned out to be a great opportunity for me to just stop and reset mm -hmm. um a couple of resources that i got i got one from you which was amazing this book and we kind of did a, a book swap which was really good we did yeah i referenced yeah. that actually yeah so if for those of you who are not watching the video right now and is just listening to the podcast she's holding up from panic to power <laughs> yes and that was the book you gave me. And then the book that I sent to you was Self Compassion. Yes. By, um, Kristen, Kristen Neff. Neff. Yeah. And that was kind of a workbook that you go through. Mm -hmm. And that was pretty eye opening to me because I was like, 
oh my god, I don't take care of myself. <laughs> <laughs> You'll say when I read it, yeah. I was like, at first I was like, what is this woman talking about? Like, what is this? I was actually yeah. getting annoyed, but then I was like, holy shit, she's right. Yeah, I actually had no idea that I wasn't properly nurturing myself. So um, eventually I stumbled upon a woman empowerment coach and her name is Angela Sudzikovic. Amazing, okay. And I found her through Instagram. She's amazing. Um, I urge you all to check her out because um, basically I, I was like, hey, this is really cool. Like she's a very um, sexually powered person, um, very, like, very empowered, very beautiful, also very confident, and you could tell that she had this energy about her that just drew me to her. So, I started doing one-on-one coaching with her, and I actually got so much more out of it than I thought. She That's actually, really good. I didn't even know you yeah. were doing that. How long has it been since you started? Um, I started seeing her about five months ago. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. And basically, I thought, like, you know, she's, she's all about um, women's pleasure and that kind of thing. And I mm-hmm. thought it would be more geared towards that. But right. little did I know that we dive deep into inner child work. Which, for those of you don't who don't know, is basically um, nurturing the person inside of yourself and opening up old traumas and connecting to different personalities in your body that kind of make up you. I like that. Wow. Yeah. Well, I, yeah, that is a lot of us yeah. need that. <laughs> yeah, honestly, it, it, I, at first, I was like, how does this work? I don't understand. I was like a little bit skeptical. I was like, am I like kooky for doing this? But yeah, I was like, I don't know. Is this, you is are this kooky weird? though. <laughs> I am. I'm very kooky, but it, it honestly, it, it, it helped me to be able to like compartmentalize my emotions, which right. was super important because a lot of my anxiety stemmed from me not being grounded. So when I was able to like go through the checklist and be like, okay, how's my inner child doing? And the, the and then I would check in and they'd be like, chaos. <laughs> and I'd be like, okay, so like, let's have a conversation. Let's, let's work through it. Uh, let's figure out why and what I can do. Um, and ultimately it just helped me start taking care of myself a lot better. Really good. Wow, I am so proud. I'm really glad you found this coach. I mean, yes. look at you, girl. You're glowing. Right? I remember the last time we spoke on Instagram. We were both such a mess on video. We were like... All we, the tears. Right? And we were so scared. We looked so <laughs> scared to like leave our room. So scared to talk mm-hmm. to other people. And look at you. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, um, it's always a process. Mm-hmm. Um, dealing with anxiety. I think um, people with anxiety have a different way of looking at the world um, because of maybe things that we've been through or the constant track that we have playing in our head of these obsessive thoughts of like, what am I doing? That's weird. I don't like this. I don't feel safe. I don't feel loved. All these things that trigger you to have these reactions. Oh. It's kind of like rewriting your brain. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly it, you know? And I'd like to touch up on that. I mean, the books that I've been reading, there is one main, like, like there's a common denominator for all of them, and that is, you know, like creating a new pathway, right, in your brain mm-hmm. and how to respond to your fears. So, you know, I mean, and I feel like um, there, one of the books, it says, you know, like, there is no such thing as you can't teach an old dog new tricks. So that's, you know, kind of like, it's very encouraging because for a lot of people who might be going through this later in their lives, like we are, well, I mean, you started at such a young age, but you know, like, (laughs) but my point is you weren't able to really look into it until now. Right. Yeah. But for you, you might've felt like, holy shit, well, I've been like this my entire life. Am I going to be like this for the rest of my entire life? 
but it's not true at all. You no, know, because yeah. you have le- you have learned, you've taught yourself how to rewire yourself, your brain, and now look at you, right? You're thriving. Yes. Yeah. I think that. I mean, ev- every day is a different story mm-hmm. for me. Um, I've definitely been doing better, and it's it's a huge it's a big deal for me because um i remember that there was a time even we had the conversation about it and i was like you know what i'm just gonna have to deal with how i feel right now because this is gonna be my life forever and yeah it 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 doesn't have to be that way yes i am so happy like i'm about to cry because like just from uh, Um, from that conversation till now do you understand like how far you've come you know yeah it it is insane i love it it's amazing you know this gives people like me hope right it's like this is exactly why i'm doing this right because i want people to know that it's it gets really fucking bad but you should never give up yeah yeah now i do have to ask you know Mm -hmm. now that everything has happened would you go through what you went through i'm talking about you know that altercation that ultimately sent you into this frenzy would you go through that again if you were able to kind of turn back time to do things and you you that's where it brought you back would you go through it again i think the short answer is yes and i say that because these kind of situations that trigger you ultimately push you towards something good if you let it. Um, and in my case, like I went to, I went and sought out um, professional medical help and, you know, it wasn't my thing. I've, I've been to group therapies and individual therapy. And um, I think that everybody has a different way of processing. Um, I'm not going to say one was medication isn't good for me, so it's not good for you. I'm not going to say that. I haven't even tried it. So that'd be super irresponsible to say that. But (laughs) (laughs) But, yeah, no, I I mean, everyone definitely has their own way. So um, I think that uh, anxiety can be triggered. by the thoughts of regret and obsessing about, you know, did I do this better? Um, I've thought back to conversations that I've had had with people like a week ago and been like, did I smile at the right time? Did I make them feel uncomfortable? Did I look like I was uncomfortable? Did right. they do that with having a panic attack? You know, you go through all this list of things and yes. I would end up having these conversations over and over and over again, like kind of perfecting them but for what you know like the conversation was already gone like I told somebody about my weekend like it (laughs) it didn't really have any like pull but this is like the kind of thoughts that go on in your head when you have anxiety and you You start obsessed and like you spiral so I mean ultimately no yeah I wouldn't change anything and you know that's great to hear yeah. I mean, obviously, the answers will vary. So every time I ask this question, it's going to change, you know, from time to time. It's just that for me, you know, it's the same way. Right? I, I wouldn't change it. Right? I'd, still yeah. eat, I'd still eat that many brownies. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. <laughs> I, I actually it. didn't know how many brownies you ate until I watched the oh, podcast. I no. was like, dude, I was like, okay, he ate the brownie. I was like, oh, I know what happens next. And then right. you're like, I ate the second one. And I was like, uh, yeah. excuse me? And then you're like, and then I ate the third one. And I was like, oh, yeah. Steven. Yeah. <laughs> that is, oh, That's my like, goodness. Oh, Lord. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's crazy. It's, but yeah, I wouldn't change a thing because I would not have noticed these things about myself. Right? I'm glad. So, yeah, yeah. It pushed you towards um, getting to know yourself better. You know, also, weed is kind of a catalyst like that. Um, yeah. I know specifically with schizophrenia, like if you have that predisposition, it can bring it out of you. It's not necessarily 
it's it's not like it causes schizophrenia, but no, it it, it, it kind definitely of just pushes you further. It's like, okay. Yeah. Here you go. <laughs> you know what they- Mama Bird says, <laughs> push. <laughs> well, it's yeah. like, damn. But, you know, I do have to say, uh, I'm not trying to deter you guys from using it. We are just trying to say that you should really figure out if there is a running mental health issue within your family genes before trying any drugs. Because it is, it, it is being used, um, weed is being used for schizophrenia patients to actually calm them down. So, you know, there's always the flip yeah. side of the coin. There are people like me, where if I do it, I could go full schizo. And then there are people who are already dealing with schizophrenia that needs to use it so they can actually calm down. So we are yeah. just saying, be careful. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think also it, 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 it says a lot about like the place you're in and, yeah. um, People with mental health health issues, I know you have talked about this before, but me as well, like we try to medicate ourselves in different ways. So like with alcohol or drugs or marijuana, all these kind of different things, we're just trying to find a way to balance ourselves out. And PSA, it's it's not helpful. And that's something I've had to come to terms with as well, is like, you can only subdue yourself so long until your body just gives up and is like, you know what? No, you're going to deal with this now. Right. And you're going to deal with it every second of the day until you make a change. So that's something to be really cautious about. Um, you know, going out, having a good time is, go- is good until it's not. Right. That is, hey... I mean, you and I were <laughs> party animals. Kind of funny. We should have seen this coming, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. Right? Like, who are two of the drunkest people you know? Connie and Steven. Oh, well. Oh. Look at them What are now, they doing? Right? It's so funny. Like, our... Dealing our little... with anxiety. Hello. Oh, yeah. oh, my God. <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> I hate it so much. But it's okay. It's a blessing in disguise. That's what I always say. You know? Yes, absolutely. My goodness. So what can you say to like other people that are going through what you're going through? I mean, you know, there's probably people out there that are too scared to reach out and are looking for answers. I mean, if you were to come across somebody that's dealing with the exact same things you're dealing with, how what would you say to them? Um, I'd start off by saying um, that there was a time that I thought that I was permanently damaged, as I said before. Um, There was a time where I had no hope. Um, I thought I would deal every day with the feelings of not being in my own body, of like being able to break out of my own reality in like a split second, um, obsessing about a lot of things, but I just kept trying, you know? reaching out to people is always an amazing resource because you find different things like the wonderful books you get from friends like a lot of people are going through it right they've tried different things so i mean keep keep trying um i started listening to myself which is super super important um listening to yourself and what you need a lot of people don't realize, like, I didn't even realize. I thought, you know what, like, I'm an adult. I know what I'm doing. You know, right. I, I get myself to work. I do this. I do that. And then I was like, this crippling anxiety is going to keep me in bed for the rest of my life. Right. So, yeah, just try and take care of yourself. You're a beautiful human, whoever's listening. I promise there's always a way. That's amazing. That is a beautiful message from my beautiful lady. Mm, yes, feel it, girl. <laughs> feel it. <laughs> All right. Well, it looks like we are about to run out of time. But I would like to say thank you so much for being on the show, Miss Connie. Thank you goodness. so much for having me. Oh, I, anytime. I think it's a wonderful idea what you're doing here. Thank I really you. hope people are listening right now and, um, Just knowing, you know, that I had you out there was important to me. So, you know, I'm here as well. I love you so much. Thanks for that, Connie. I love you too. Well, you know what, guys? Connie over here will be back 
for subsequent episodes, you know, like I'm just trying to think of like, you know, maybe her and I can just go through a bunch of people and help them out. You know, and honestly, if you guys want to join us, right, just feel free to send me a message. Just email Absolutely. me, stevendiego.hotmail.com. If you have questions for me and Connie, you know, um, what was your coach's Instagram handle? It is Angela Sudzikovic. So at A-N-G-E-L-A dot S-U-D-Z-U-K-O-V-I-C. Nice. All right. I will have that info in the about this episode. Don't worry, guys. <laughs> you don't have to try and pretty long. Look, yeah, I'll look for this. But yes. All right. Okay. Well, that's it for today. Thank you again, Connie. I will talk to you after, right? Okay. All right, guys. I hope you guys have a great night. And remember, be kind and be compassionate to other people. This is Breaking Down the Breakdown with Steven Diego and Connie Russell. Woo-hoo! Good night!